What's up, everybody? It's Ty the Bourbon Guy, and welcome back to another Whiskey Hall. I guess that's what we're going to call it. I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> Leave a comment if I should name this something different. I've called it Whiskey Pickups, Halls, whatever. At the end of the day, I got more whiskey, and we're here to talk about it. So, if you haven't noticed a particular theme next to me, <laughs> I realize that a lot of the bottles that I've acquired lately come from one particular company. These are all from Barrel Craft Spirits. Uh, Stellum is a brand that's still part of Barrel. So if you see any, you know, the separate brands, it's still part of the same family. So I thought, let's just do one video and knock out all these <laughs> together, right? So let's start here in the front. So this is the Stellum Rye. This is the, and I hope I'm saying this right, the Fibonacci blend. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can really mess that up, but I think that's what it's pronounced or how it's pronounced. This particular one, now this is the cast strength uh, you know, version of the Stellum. So this one's 115.12 proof. And like I said, Fibonacci blend number one. And this actually was recommended to me. So somebody in the area that I, you know, talk with that person also makes content. They're on Instagram, Indie Whiskey Finder, go follow them on Instagram, do it. <laughs> uh, but you know, I talked with him and, and we talked quite a bit about different bottles in the area and, and what to try and maybe what people aren't really looking at. And I've had the Stellum Rye, but I hadn't had this particular blend. And he talked so highly about it and, you know, said that he wanted to go out and find another bottle. And, you know, so I trust him. And so I was like, man, I, next time I see it, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and buy it. So this particular one and then this one, the Rye, this is batch four, which, you know, won a lot of awards last year, was on a lot of people's radars. These these two were actually part of the same deal, the same transaction. There's a store in the area that I live in and, you know, they're actually just, I, I don't know what happened, all the details, but they're shutting down. And so I think it was kind of one of those deals where I don't really see too many people in that store when I go, but I think it's unfortunate just because in general, it's a really cool place to go. They actually had, they called it Bourbon World and you'd walk in and there's a whole room of whiskey. So I've always thought that that was a really cool experience just overall. I do think that even in that scenario, there's still, which that's going to be the case no matter what, but there's still people that kind of go in there and say like, oh, they don't have anything good. Well, they've got plenty of things good. You just have to kind of branch out based on, you know, either what was recommended or maybe try something new or whatever the case is. They had plenty of great whiskey in that room, but either way, that's a whole different thing. They shut down. They had a 25% off sale, closeout sale. So I had been eyeing these two bottles for a while and at 25% off for both of them. Yeah, I'll take it. Uh, I believe one was either $80, $90 range. I think the other one was about $100 range. 25% off is huge. <laughs> That's the cheapest I probably will ever find either of those bottles. I didn't have to rush out day one because I knew like people are going to go after certain things and I don't know that anybody's going to like really even think to go after these bottles. One, because they're awry and then two, just because of the nature of it, I just, I don't know. I was right, they were still sitting there the next day, but I don't know how much longer they were there. There was only a few bottles left when I grabbed these two, but either way, I felt like these were two that were on my radar for a while. I wanted to try them. I wanted to see, do they live up to the hype as I am curious about a lot of bottles lately. And I just, and this will be the theme across the video, I just trust everything Barrel does. Doesn't mean that I always agree or it's my favorite whiskey of all time every single time. But overall, their blending process, the way that they select barrels, their finishing process, I'm a fan of. And I've been a fan of for a long time. So to, for them to kind of get some of the mainstream recognition that I've seen them get lately, I'm, I'm excited for them because they've been doing this for a long time. And I'm glad that people are finally starting to see what they're doing. So I'm interested to see what these taste like, but let's keep going. So this one is their New Year bourbon. This one is the 2024 obviously. Although I can still actually find the 2023. I don't know that I've seen any 22s, but you can typically find like prior years of this particular one. Uh, so this one is a blend of straight bourbon whiskeys. On their website, they actually lay out every single thing that it's a blend of, um, even on the back of the label here. So uh, Kentucky 8-year, uh, Wyoming 11, New York 5, and Tennessee 8 and 5. Texas 5, Ohio 5, Maryland 5 and 6, Indiana 5, 6, 8, oh, no, 5, 6, and 9. So, that's a lot going on in a whiskey. The 
derived mash bill is also included here. Corn, 72%, 22% rye, and 5% malted barley, 1% wheat. So by default, this ends up becoming a four grain bourbon, a blend with all of those that I just listed. I, you know, it, again, if anybody's gonna be able to take barrels from all these different states, all these different distilleries, figure out which ones work, how to blend them together and come up with a great product, it's Barrel Craft Spirits. So I can't wait to try this. Um, again, heard good things, but I always wanna see for myself. All right, the next step we have from their cask finishing series, A Tale of Two Islands. This particular one is, so I may get this wrong, but they had a rum that they originally released. Once that was done, they then took bourbon and I believe finished it in there. So I think you finished it there and then they also finished it, I want to say an Isla cask. And I could be wrong. Somebody leave a comment <laughs> if I got it wrong. But I believe that they did that separately and then blended it together, is my understanding. But again, haven't really done too much research on it. But I was very interested to see, I know Isla's involved and I know the, the rum casks are involved. And that's the idea of the two tail, or the tail of two islands, I should say, here in this bottle, in this blend. To me, that's so unique. That's something that I'm not necessarily the biggest rum finish person. I'm also not the biggest Isla Scotch drinker either, but I'm really curious how these start to play together, especially in a blend. And especially again, by a company that knows what they're doing. I, I'm, this one is more interesting to me than anything. It's one that I would love to sit with and just see what direction we're going and see kind of just what plays out with this particular whiskey. Just by looking at it, I don't know that it's one that I'd reach for every single day or something like that, but overall, it seems like a unique bottle. It seems like something that I just want to see what it does. It's not just finished in one thing. It's finished in two very unique combinations and brought together. So we'll see. All right, the next one is Batch 35. This is their bourbon that they've blended together. This is age stated at six years, which for those that may not know, if you have a bourbon or, or a blend or any bottle that's age stated, when it says six years, that just basically means that, that that's at least the age of it. Meaning that the youngest whiskey in this blend has to at least be six years. So if you were to blend an 18 year whiskey and a six year whiskey together, you could age state it at six years, but it doesn't mean that that entire blend is all six years old. So this is batch 35. I've been with Barrel now for a while, you know, in, in terms of trying their different products. And, uh, you know, I can't remember the exact number that a batch that I got when I first found them, maybe. I want to say it was somewhere in the teens, maybe like batch 18 or 19 or something like that, maybe. Um, the bottles that I have left, I want to say are like batch 26 and 28. And so some of the late 20s are still around for me. Um, now they're up to 35. So I heard great things about 34, never got a chance to try it. 35 was on everybody's list. And again, I, I get these bottles because I'm curious, is it a hype thing or is it something that actually is good? I already know. With Barrel, it just is what it is. And, and I've talked about this before with other bourbons and other whiskeys in general. But we can get into the details of Batch 35. I liked it better than Batch 34. And when you're blending bourbon the way that, and not just bourbon, but blending whiskeys in general the way that Barrel does, I could absolutely see how batches are going to be different batch to batch because you're blending different products, right? That makes sense to me. But either way, at the end of the day, it's all still very good whiskey. So I still wouldn't get caught up on batch 35 versus 34, whatever the case is. If you've never tried these, you know, either maybe try it at a bar first, maybe just because of the, the price, if you can find a bar or a friend's house. But if you're going to take a chance on one, I would maybe start here uh, with just the blend of bourbon and go from there and, and maybe start to branch out to their other products from there. And this particular one is distilled in Kentucky, Tennessee, and Indiana. So they blended the three together and came up with this particular product and I'm excited to try it. All right, last but not least, <laughs> this is a private release bourbon uh, for the grocery store or the grocery store, like there's one grocery store in my area, <laughs> a grocery store here locally to me called Market District. This particular one is a blend of straight bourbon whiskeys that's 30% five year, 30% seven year, 35% 10 year, and 5% 17. So 
a little bit different. They have some products where it's just a single barrel. So that barrel is one that they bottle however many bottles, let's say 200 something bottles for that particular store or that, that club or whatever it may be. And then once that barrel's done being bottled, then it's just it. This is actually a blend that is then released for that whoever, that store, whatever the case is. And that's what this is. This is a blend that was then released, uh, not just a single barrel. So I've never had any of these that have been bad. So I'll start there. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know why, but I think that these ones are ones that maybe, maybe people just don't know enough about them. But another one that's, I think, slept on quite a bit, this has sat in that grocery store for a long time. And it's just one that, I don't know, people don't, maybe aren't willing to pay the price to try it for themselves. I don't know what the case is, but again, it's one that slept on quite a bit. It is hard because it's going to vary bottle to bottle. These are different blends, you know, whatever the case is, similar to, like I said, about single barrels, but it, again, whatever barrel's willing to do <laughs> and willing to try, I'm willing to try it because I think they get it right way more than they get it wrong. And, you know, and again, even they're wrong. It just may not be something for my palate. There's been a lot of things that, and not just barrel, but in general, whiskey, things that I don't like or not for me that people love. So it's no different than food. It's no different than anything else where it's just so subjective that you just kind of have to take what I say or what anybody else says with a grain of salt. You have to try for yourself and figure out whether you like it or not. And that's all that matters. Appreciate you tuning in today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for all the support. And I'll see you in the next whiskey video. Cheers.